Adesanya, welcome. Hi. So uh, I'd like to start by talking about the thing that all of your fans have been talking about for months. Uh, late last year, you shaved off your beard, which was the, the biggest signifier of your religious faith. It really sparked a debate about what your intentions were and what was happening for you. Um, tell me what was going on in your life at that time. So I was going through this sort of a very spiritual, based up because of some physical things that were going on with me, I got forced into this place of a very strict discipline. And, uh, and it was becoming like I was having a lot of clarity in my mind and in my life about things. I think a lot of people, um, correctly or not, would associate a shaving of the beard with a lapse of religious faith. It yeah. seemed like you at the time wanted to make it clear that wasn't the case. Can you help define that? Yeah, a bit it's interesting. It's cool that you picked up on that, man. It was actually the opposite. It was, I was, I was becoming disciplined in a lot more areas of my life. When I was 14, I grew dreadlocks. I was when I was listening to reggae music a lot, and that, I remember that became my identity in high school. I was the kid with dreadlocks, and and I felt that I need to let go of that identity in order to find some who who I really am, you know, deep inside. So this is just a longer version. This was 10 years, and and basically I came to a point where I just felt something needed to free up inside, and I needed to get beyond who I thought I was for so strongly for such a strong period of time. You said, no more Hasidic reggae star. Right, right. Um, You said, sorry folks, all you get is me. Right. But that also sort of implies when you say no more Hasidic reggae star, that also right. implies that you're stepping away from a specific sect too. Right. Is that also the case? Or? You know, initially I was very much a part of that group, but in the last five years or so, you know, I've been really fluid in terms of what I identify with and what I feel connected with. Inspirationally, I still have a, derived like a lot of my inspiration from from a Hasidic source. You know, you have a new album coming out in July uh, called Spark Seeker. Um, how are some of these changes reflected in the music itself? Well, the music is fun. The music's a fun record, and then the music is about letting go and trying to just go after the light and find find the places you know where things open, where there's freedom and where you feel that let go. And that, that's really what the music is about. It's a full record, it's a lush record. It's it's a lot more, uh, it's very melodic and hooky and it's got, it's fun to listen to. Your detractors have long said that you know, your image had as much to do with your fame as your music. You can take that or leave it as it may. And, and some of those critics might say, you know, maybe this latest transformation is the next step in, in marketing yourself. Yeah. How do you respond to that? Well, I don't respond. Like, I, I think that music has that power that it transcends anything, everything. It can, it speaks on a soul level. And the soul is bigger than, than time, than race, than religion, than anything, you know? Uh, well, the album's out in July, Spark Seeker. Uh, Modest Helio, I really appreciate you coming in. Thanks okay. very much. Thank you. For The Wall Street Journal, I'm John Jurgensen.